great pleasure to welcome you along to the show, oh, JD. Oh, thank you for having me. Thank you for having no, me. No, it's, it's a real pleasure. There's so many of the tunes we've been doing, you know, over the past few years that have been uh, played on the show, much requested. and. Okay. That's good. <laughs> well, no, it's like, yeah. you know, I was, I was saying to you, you know, before we got in the studio, there's some, um, there's definitely a sound that you've got, which I think people over here, and obviously in the States, really, really like, you know, the, the thing is, it is a spectrum, do you know what I mean, from the stuff you've done with Q-Tip, right. the breathing stops, which are more sort of party rocking, right. to the Erica stuff, to the common stuff, to the slum, you know, right, it's, right, and, right. And, then, and then on the new album, the one that, that you're here right. to promote, Welcome to Detroit, which is forthcoming on BBE, mm -hmm. you know, it's, um, there's some mad little tunes on there, do you know what I mean, you know, <laughs> right, there's right. tracks which had shown an influence in some of the other records, mm -hmm. but you know, tracks like Think Twice and tracks like Brazilian Groove right. have got their, you know, they speak for themselves, do you know what I mean, they're, right, they're sort of Mazel right. Brothers take and that, and coming out and doing them outright is yeah. well, right. great for me and, and great for many people over here. But, but before we get into talking <laughs> about the new album That's and a lot sick. of stuff, I wanted to take it, take it right back okay. and just sort of ask you how you... Um, you know what how you got into music what the, a young jd was was listening to and um, um you know the influences in detroit and okay well uh we started back um like my father used to uh take me every week and buy me a 45 7 inch record so okay. that's how i started i mean this is back when i can before i can remember you know what i'm saying really yeah, yeah. i mean you uh, know that's how i started so i was actually doing parties at the age of five six with the help of my older sister, but I had all the records. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? So they used to bring what's, me to the What sort of stuff was he uh, buying you? Like, that was back when, uh, what was I? I remember buying Open Sesame, Cool, cool in the Gang. Um, it was something else I bought. I, I can just remember. Parliament, it was um, one of Parliament Funkadelic records. That was back when it was real hot, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, um, but, but really, he used, he used to buy a lot of uh, Jack McDuff. Okay. Um, James Brown. Right, it was a mixture right. of both, like jazz and funk in the house. Then my mother being a, she was trying to be an opera singer as a young, youngster. So with her classical influences, okay, funk, jazz, was all kind of music playing around the crib. So, so you, it was a, a musical house. Did, 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 yeah. did your dad play any instruments? Yeah, he played um, uh, upright bass. Okay. Uh, also keyboards and you know. And was he in any bands or did he put any stuff out or yeah. was it just more? If you ever heard the song, um, um, it's a shame. Okay. It's a shame. Uh, thing. Detroit. Yeah. Anyway, um, he, um, yeah, he actually uh, co-wrote that song. Oh and, really? And uh, yeah. So that's a little story. So. Cool. And at the age of six, you do sort of doing little parties and. Yeah, doing parties and. That's quite uh, hard for right, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, so that just the love right there. My um, older sister had a boyfriend who yeah. was a DJ, so that's how I got into. Uh, wanted to be interested in two turntables and so forth, right? Which led to beats. Yeah. The uh, you know just curi curiosity on how it was done and how beats were created. And so you so you sort of got into the DJing thing with y your sister's yeah. boyfriend, sort of influenced you, and then you. Uh, yeah. What what sort of time what time period is this? This is this is um before, I know I was, this is around eighty six eighty seven. Okay. Eighty six, around that time. That's when I got, really got into wanting to be a DJ. Right, um, right, right, the right. Jazzy Jeff, Fresh Prince was out. You know. I wanted to be a DJ, Jam Master J. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you got into the cutting and yeah, scratching and... Yeah, yeah, I, I wanted to be a DJ at that time. So, like I said, um, I just wanted to um, know how the beats were done. I, I didn't know how it was done. I just knew that I can hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, just out of curiosity, actually sampling other people's music, you know, how, that's how we yeah, do, but yeah. take drum breaks from other people's record that's out or whatever, loop your own thing. That's how I got started. And then, you know, by digging. Yeah collecting old records that I already had, you know, before, and then uh, friends of mine gave me records or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, that's, that's how I really, really got into the, this beat thing. Um, yeah, and, and what did you still, you know, did, did you get an MPC back then, or was you just um, making about Actually, yeah, yeah, I was on a tape deck, I was making beats on tape decks, okay. just to pause and record thing. So, a friend of mine um, showed me how to work the MPC about, right. about a year into doing this uh, tape deck thing. Uh, Show me how to work the MPC 62, okay. which was out, I think, 89, 90, well, no, 90 something. Right, 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 right. So, um... For, I suppose for people who are listening who don't know the MPC, is a, is a drum yeah, machine? Yeah, it's a drum machine, yeah. Um, it's made by Akai, you know, yeah. uh, 
it's a bit of an industry standard, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's like almost almost like an SP twelve hundred. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. If, if you knew about that one. Do you, do you um do, do you use the SP twelve hundred much? Yes. Is it the the two things that are sort of basis of what you? Yeah, I actually um before actually before the MPC sixty two, um I was I was using an SP twelve, okay. from the same friend. He used to let me borrow this uh, SP twelve. So. And 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 you know sort of moving on to sort of making the beats. Did you have anything out on local labels in Detroit, or what was the sort of moves into actually um, getting, being into DJing and making beats right. to getting the first records out? I right. Mean, what was the first track you produced that came out? Um, a joint for Fat Cat. Uh, okay. It's called um, Day in the Life with the Homies. A day with the Homies. And uh, this B side was Front Street. Oh, okay. Yeah, back in the day. That was that was my first release, and that was right before um, about a half a year before far side uh, okay. cuts and and what right, so, 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 so how did you get it out onto payday was it a deal that fat cat had with with payday or was yeah and we, you knew him from is he yeah from um actually yeah uh, me and fat was uh working together he had a partner before okay so we used to work together and uh actually the same cat that taught me how to work the npc he used to let us come over and record so right 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 all, all of this story has a lot to do with uh this guy amp fiddler uh who let us come in and do our thing basically so um but fat cat like i said we worked before and we put out what well, you put out some wax what year i can't think of the year i'm bad with the years but put out some vinyl basically sold them on the streets of the d straight out the basement yeah um got fuzzy from universal just happened to be in detroit heard about the buzz i don't know how he got with fat cat yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, make a long story short, they hooked up and. I'm always quite interested because there's like quite a big scene in England of you know the sort of people in checking all their sort of independent hip hop and, and stuff like that, and it always fascinates me how the. I mean, I suppose it's fairly obvious, really, how right. you go from the independent to the major. Right, right. But there, there's quite a gulf between them. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot it of people is. who've been making a lot of records on independent labels that that never get picked up by the major, and it, right. it just it just interests me. How, you know, I mean. Yeah, I suppose it's fairly self-explanatory because the stuff yeah. you do is wicked, and some of the other stuff is sort of is. <laughs> but some of the stuff is good as well. Do you know what I mean? Right. It sort of never gets through. But I suppose it's just a case of A and R people picking up on it. And yes, yeah, it's, it's hard. It's definitely hard. I mean, I, I had the worst, the worst time. I mean, it's taken since '95 yeah. to, to now to get here. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's just when you want to do what you want to do, and, and you got something new, they're scared of it. They, yeah. Everybody's always scared of it until. You got a blockbuster artist or whatever using the, you know what I'm saying, production. You got a buster, you got an Erica Badu, then they accept it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, yeah, okay, yeah. well, I understand it now. But I was shopping Slum Village demos when I first was even trying to get into the door. I was shopping Slum Village demos and no doors were open. Yeah, no. I, I mean, people that. I worked for in production in this industry, like working for artists, they hear it, it's, it's all good, but no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's safe. Yeah, it's unless you, unless you have a following, they're not going to accept it. Yeah. So, so uh, I mean, going back to the whole sort of Detroit thing, that the sort of you know the two bases of of hip hop that had been for a long time was New York right. and L.A. And obviously, all that's changed now with the whole sort of you know the whole Philly thing. Yeah. And then the thing you know with Timberland and the, the Southern sort of thing. But I mean, the scene in Detroit, you know, obviously now you look back and it's like, oh, what well, is Eminem? And right, there must right. have been something going on there for ages, but. For a long time, it wasn't really. There weren't a lot of things that I, I was hearing of that were coming out of Detroit. I mean, what, how did the scene operate in Detroit? Was it like mm. just little jams and parties and? Yeah, it was. We had a basically a small, very small. Um, I guess you could say hip hop community. I don't want to use it, but I guess um, we, we we only met at certain places. Maurice Malone had a lot to do with. Um, he started a lot of hip hop shop and the open mics that Eminem used to go to back in the day. Um, a lot of artists, you know what I'm saying? That, yeah. That's that's coming up right now, and it, and it's people that we all know each other from those from those little places, those little couple of clubs. So, you know, uh, basically the hip hop percentage is about two percent. You know, it's in Detroit techno and R and B, and you know, it's quite freaky, isn't it? It's yeah, it's sort of one place that that, that that you know, I mean, techno relatively in the rest of America is quite sort of marginal do you know right, what I mean you yeah. know it's, it's the other way around right really. right right but nah not there, not there. it's quite a I mean I, I went there once and it, it and we were listening to like Derek May driving around the city and it did seem to be 
it suited the mood of the place. Do you know what right, I mean? It's right. all a bit, it's yeah, it does. It run does. down and yeah. deserted and the eeriness of those records. Yeah, yeah. I mean, was that something that you were sort of checking when you were growing up? I suppose if it's 90, yes. you know, if your hip hop's 2%, yeah. then you're going right, to have to right. be. Yeah, it's like that's all That's all we had was uh, these, these clubs, these techno clubs. I mean, I still, I enjoy it. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if I have time, I'll. Double dabble on the machine, you know. Yeah, yeah. well, some, as we've you know. seen on with your uh, right, right, the BBE the, yeah, track. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love that music, do you know what I mean? I yeah. can see the funk in it and I love the futuriness of it. Right. I, like I was saying to you before we came into the studio about the Q tip tracks. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's all in and, and, and those sort yeah, of things. Right, right. They really have that feel to it. And, and what, uh, that's why I'm so glad you came in because when I was listening to them, I was like, <laughs> oh, this sounds like, you know, it's like I knew you were from Detroit right. and it sounds really techy. Mm -hmm. And then it, interesting listening to what else is going on in, in hip hop, you know. I mean, I've I got the Memphis Bleak album right. and some right. of those right. things. And obviously the Timberland stuff. Yeah, there is a yeah, real yeah. techie. I mean, what, 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 what do you think that is? Why do you think that's? I think, think it's just um, it moving on. Yeah, I think I think it's just moving on. Uh, new sounds. You know, I know myself. I, I don't even want to use a Fender Rose, and again, if I can help it. Uh, so it's just probably people just growing and trying to trying different things. Well, it's it's interesting because yeah. there's a show on on a slot on the show that we do, and recently we made um, Charles Erland our artist of oh, the yeah. week. And I was listening to this track called Intergalactic Love Song, and it's him using arps and, and all that sort of stuff. And you sort of think, to, listening back, it's almost like what you're doing now is what they were doing then, in terms of, you know, an art was a brand new piece yeah. of kit, and then you listen to Stevie Wonder, Songs in the Key of Life, and, yeah, you know, man. embracing all that technology. And it's yeah. just, you know, I, I, I love hearing these new sounds, do you know what I mean? And, and I think it's, it's good to hear you say things like, I mean, I love the Fender Roads, do you know what I mean? Right, but right, it's right. an instrument from... You know, yeah, I don't know when yeah. it was invented, but it's been around for a while. It's been around. It's, it's, it's a lot of new things, right? That that you can play with. I know. I know. And uh, speaking of a couple of producers like uh, Rock Wilder, yeah, who you know took me by surprise. I, I didn't even know. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I hadn't heard production like his. Before. It's crazy. So so that's what I like in in a you know a pr producer. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can bring something to the table. Yeah. You know. I mean, do you think there's anything going on in the clubs that's influenced the change in sound, or do you just think it's just the way hip hop sort of moves on? Club has a lot to do with it. Because um, it's a lot more, you know, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's why I said the two things, of, or there's more than two things, but yeah. the sides of what you do, there's a lot of, like, home sort of chilled right. stuff. Right. And then the breathing stops, which are a lot more sort of jump up and right. bouncing. And yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm about to say, sometimes uh, you can make things, well, I won't say for the wrong reason, but, you know, just for that, like, like a producer can make a joint just for the club. I mean, that's that's what people do just because it's so important in this industry and in, in this numbers and the sales and you know what I'm saying that's what the labels look for so um cats like Rockwild or Timberland yeah. who do it in their own way you know what I'm saying I'm, I'm not mad at that you know do you, do, you, do you have much to do I mean do you, do you, I mean I don't know but I, I just think it would be quite interesting to hear a conversation between you and Timberland right right you? and I, I actually that's that's one of the cats I haven't uh, hooked up with I, I, I met almost everybody but uh yeah, I'm, I'm waiting to hook up with that cat. Yeah. yeah, he's done some pretty mad stuff, hasn't he? And yeah, ne Neptune's as well, I think, are right, coming on right, that yeah. sort of new. Yeah, got a new sound. And the Neptune's on that Kellis album, it reminded me, there's some yeah. beautiful little tracks on there, like Suspended or whatever, where they just, they get into that same sort yeah. of groove that that I associate with you, do you know what I mean? Yes. Old but new. That's what it's about. Well, well, sort of going back to sort of the, 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 the whole story and that, the sort of, I think the first big record you worked on was the Lab Cab in California. Right. Far side record. Right. How did how did that come about? Because they're based in LA. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, um, they were actually in New York, um, working on the album. They just started. Yeah. And um, Tip Q Tip was uh, my manager at that time. Okay. Yeah. Um, how did you get to a cut with Q Tip? Through a Lollapalooza concert in Detroit. All right. Here comes the name again. Amp Fittler, the guy from the basement, NPC and all, takes me <laughs> to a Tribe Called Quest concert out of the blue. I hadn't talked to Amp in about a few months. You know, that was my man, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but he yeah. went on the road with the Parliament for this tour. So he called me out the blue, make a long story short, took me straight to the Q-tip, handed him a tape, Slum Village tape, that I was actually shopping, but he was interested in the production. Right, right, and um, right. so we took it from there. And like a week later, he was my manager. So about a month later, that's when I was in the studio with Farside. So, okay. And and we actually did the first uh, few sessions in New York, and then we went to Cali. Running. 
Was um, that a beat that you'd had for a while, or was that a sort of? That How was did like, you work with them? Was it was it you? You just took the beats in, and they were like, "Yeah, Wicked will have that." Yeah, basically, okay. uh, <laughs> <laughs> made it made it a little easier. But uh, but um, like like getting into running. Uh, that's that's when I started listening to uh, like Sergio Mendes. Like, I I yeah, wasn't Stan Getzler. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, I wasn't into that that music. You know, what I'm saying I, I only heard uh, you know, funk, R&B, jazz, but. Not really. So the whole sort of digging thing and sort of going yeah. off on little tangents and getting into different areas is sort of has affected that. Uh, yeah, definitely got me sound. open. Yeah, I'm open to like a lot of things now. Looking at like the Common album, right? And a lot of those productions that, that you know that I'm a for people who don't know, what okay. is it? That was um, well first uh, the meaning is uh, community of brotherhood. Okay. So that would go apply to me, Q-Tip, and uh, Ali Shahid of Tribe Called Quest. Okay. And uh, we actually formed this production crew. At the uh, Trackmaster was, was big around the time we uh, we uh, formed it. And that was actually one of the reasons why we did it. To kind of, um, I don't know, bring the, the funk, the good feeling music back into the radio waves. Right, right. Because it was right. just track yeah. master heaven you know what i'm saying at that time so you know we, we, was, we was like just we gotta put a name is it right sort of like, i mean you know native tongues was the thing that seemed to uh, th right. that would held all like de la soul and jungle brothers and tribe right. called quest together back yeah, then yeah right is right. it sort of like a almost like an updated version of that but just with the, on the producing yeah side? definitely because it's that sort of vibe isn't it? do you know what i mean yeah. it definitely follows on from the oh, tribey yeah. sort of yeah feel. definitely and um actually we had had um another member rafael sadiq who joined the um right before uh the company you know we all you know we all went our separate ways because okay. of the lucy pro thing the tip thing the jd thing you know it's almost like a split in two yeah but yeah. you know it's, it's we are still family but uh yeah. i just it was something it was an idea that that q-tip really really had you know originally and he wanted to do and just didn't know how to do it we didn't know how to do it the right way we just went into it because it was a good idea and was it you just know, it, was it almost like you little just got in the studio to you know you were you doing stuff together yeah, and mixes together and, and, and yeah I I do a beat tip a put a hi hat on it uh, whatever crash mix it yeah Ali put, whatever you know it was just all together if um Ali did something and the drums weren't banging enough just to you know yeah Jay do this whatever you know so, so yeah so it's a real little yeah we, team we looked out for each other yeah and and, and when did that all get together and what were the things you were working you know what were the projects that sort of came out of the initial um let me see. the q-tip album you know things like that well the q-tip album leads us on quite nicely to because i mean that album freaked me okay i thought it was amazing oh good i man. thought it was really good you know it was a i mean it, it surprised me as well i mean tracks like breathe and stop were were big tunes but when i was in the states i was asking people and people said that it didn't seem to be as received as well right. as I imagined it would have been because I right. thought it would have just right. gone through right. the roof because mm. the singles that came off it the first couple yeah were you know just what killer club tunes people were just not happy with seeing q-tip in that light yeah it, there is no way I mean because I, I think he did a good job with the album you know what I'm saying yeah, my, my, myself as a fan yeah of q-tip you know what I'm saying I mean but everywhere I went it's like people were like uh, Nah, the beats were cool, but I don't like it. One of the other things I, I wanted to talk about was the, the use of samples and right. the way that, that hip-hop used to be, you know, the sort of Pete Rock, and even before that, they were just using the break, the bass line, yeah. the hook. Right. The sort of the looking at the front door type of loop mm -hmm. scenario, do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Right. And um, what you're doing now is using a lot less of the actual sample, right. but just chopping it in a much more sort of creative and right it, um, it, it really it, it fascinates me because I, I, I love the move i just wondered what prompted it and right. I, I, cause I was wondering if it was like a sort of move away from trying to clear samples because it's not such an obvious they're, they're almost was, like sound sources do yeah, you know what i mean i was gonna say uh that that has a lot to do with it uh because they have these scouts now that actually listen for samples really yeah and um you know a lot of producers know that so we try to get away from it. I mean, and if we're gonna use a sample, if I'm gonna use a sample and clear it, I mean, it's gonna be freaked to the maximum. So, you know, yeah, I'm, yeah. you might not even 
hear any of it, but you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use it. I'm, I'm not, I'm not just gonna loop it. I don't like that. Because in, because in a way, it's, it's like the evolution of, of the music. Do you know what I mean? And and the drum programming as well. I suppose the fact that, you know, all right. So you get a drum machine right. or a sampler and you load in a big chunk because you can do it. Right, right. But then so after a while, do you know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. well, what are we gonna do? You got, you got what are we gonna it. do next? And and I think the way that all the beats are sort of programmed in and stuff just yeah. seems it's it's really. It's just funky, do you know what I mean? Really syncopated, and it's, it's definitely a good sound. And it, it just, it just intrigued me. <laughs> and we've already spoke about the sort of the equipment and the sort of the MPC thing, because yeah. I suppose that has a lot to do with it. Yeah, that has a lot to do with it. Yep. Um, the type of machine you use definitely has a lot to do with your sound. Um, yeah. I, I got this one cat from Detroit who was using a uh, 2000 MPC. I've never heard beats that sound like that sonically. Really? Yeah, yeah. So. It has a lot to do with it. No, he, he's an up, up and coming cat. So, and YG. What's, oh, so what's he yeah, about to say, look out for YG. Yeah, because yeah. uh, yeah, he, he's definitely on my. Has team. he got any stuff coming out? Um, actually, he's just working on a new Buster joint. Okay. Me, so yeah, so he he will have some stuff out. This oh, will be his first, uh, you know. First you know look out for that. Yeah. Another thing that really fascinates me about mm -hmm. you know um, hip hop and um, I suppose American music in general is just like the the sort of the production sound of it. It always sounds really big and really right. heavy. Do you know what I mean? Right, and right. it's um, I don't know what, what is it? Is it just the, the way of EQ or the way of compressing or EQing? What makes them sound mm. makes them sound better than most of the English records? You know what? Yeah, they, they they really take that to heart. They they take it serious um, over there. It's like um, I remember mastering the Slum Village album. What they do is like I know when I mix stuff. I mean, sometimes it comes out big, sometimes it doesn't. But the Slum Village album, it was really like basement, basement, yeah. basement quality. But they take it and just, just expand it in this mastering plant, whatever, what have you. It's just like is it is, is this when you're mastering it or when you're yeah, mixing it? Yeah, when, when you're mastering. Okay. Yeah. So in um, what place is like? Like a Sterling Sound. Yeah, like, that's, Tom that's, Coyne. That's, yeah, Tom Coyne is crazy. So that's what it, that, that was one of the things because working with SpaceX. Yeah. We took the SpaceX record out there to get it. Sound, Ma yeah. mastered and whatever yeah. and and it was quite amazing the different the thing that actually came out of, of basically the process of just putting a dat mm -hmm. onto vinyl or onto cd do you know what i mean you you yeah. think you you know i suppose a, a lay person would just think that it just goes on straight you, you mix right. it in the studio right. <laughs> it but it, it's amazing yeah it's, it's that just the boost you get yeah on i want to say this technology is something else i mean when you talk about that he he showed me when he mastered uh, I just say one of the joints, Jealousy, off the Slum Village album. He mastered it. He took all of the vocals off of the track and just EQ'd the sample. Straight from a two track, left and right, that. And you wonder, like, how is that possible? And they got the machine to do that. And it's, it's, that is quite Yeah, for me, yeah, I'm, I'm like, ah, oh, you know, I'm, I'm like a little kid in the, in the store, you know, <laughs> I, I like that type of stuff. So. You know, that's uh, mad though because I mean you know normally you know if you've got a line with the vocals on it yeah. like a fader you can just push it back but that's all right if you've got 24 tracks but when you've got two right yeah <laughs> you know so. I suppose that brings us almost sort of you know talked about the the q-tip album and um, the common album was was okay. was an interesting project okay it's, it's a, you know a wicked album you know d doing it is one side of it right. time traveling song for a satire yeah, you know the yeah, whole spectrum yeah. of, of stuff and i know yeah that you oh, didn't man. work on all of those tracks but, but you yeah. know that and it also brings us back to the you know fella cootie being one of your influences working with femi oh yes yes, yes must yes. have been quite a nice man that was incredible let me tell you um i'm a big fella fan oh my goodness i mean all the box sex any record i can find and if anybody else got records send them to me please because <laughs> i need all of it i can get yo that There's music, yeah. I mean, it's not only not only that. That's just one artist. It was mad. Like last year, we had Tony Allen and you know the drummer. Oh yeah. And we, we we were chatting to him, and he was telling us that what the reason that the tracks are so long was because when they used to play in the club in Lagos, mm -hmm. the Shrine, that it was so rough outside that people would get there like ten o'clock or whatever because Lagos was such a heavy sort of place to be. Mm -hmm. They used to just play all through the night. So that it'd finish at six or seven when it was light and everyone could go home safely. Man, oh man! But it, yeah. it, it sort of put it because you, you just think, well, you can't drum for eight hours and you can't play half, you know, right. half hour long at that tempo. Man, and with that ferocity, it's pretty, 
Yeah. He's, he's like a drum. It. He's like a drum machine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. I mean, that's that's crazy. I, yeah, I actually use uh, uh, speaking of Tony Allen, one of the uh, joints on the Common album. Uh, bring that. It's from Tony Allen. Tony Allen uh, LP. Yeah. Uh, I I think I, I had a copy of this, but um, I actually left it in a club up in um in North Wales. You've done a version of What Get No Enemy. We, we, yeah, actually, um, Amir from uh, The Roots, he's actually, well, we're supposed to do the Soul, Soul Aquarium project. Okay. So, we're doing like, um... Is, is, that's another, is that another little group in, like, the Amma? Yeah, well, it's, it's, um, it's not, like, it's not the same, uh, right. because it's not, um, inked. Okay. You know, we, we just call ourselves the Soul Aquarium, you know, we just we all just Aquarium. get in the studio and jam. Yeah. Work. And what's that? Is that with the 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 the, the roots and the um, sort of Philly crew? Yep, uh, Mir, uh, James Poiser, and uh, D'Angelo, right now. So those are the members, and we got an album coming soon. Yeah, maybe maybe not too soon. Uh, I know it's another roots album they're working on, and you know a few things, but it's coming soon, and we're working just a little at a time, and uh, probably be a lot of remakes and things like that. And, really. Wicked, that oh, sounds yeah, good. Yeah, we're gonna try to freak it. Yeah. And um, and when, when when you do that, is that do you go? Is that when you do you go to Philly? Because I hear they've got the roots have got yeah. a big sort of complex where everyone sort of gets on and does their thing. Yes, Philly is. They got place. a good little scene going there. Yeah, right? I like it. it. It reminds me of Detroit a little bit. So yeah. I, I like to work down there. It's definitely comfortable. And, and they the got roots have got a nice little sort of yeah lockdown on you know. Oh yeah. And the whole yeah. ja the whole Jazzy Jeff thing with Jill Scott right. and right. Oh yeah, Philly. That's what I'm saying. Jazzy Jazz, my man, too. Yeah, yeah, man. They, they got. There's a lot of good music. Yeah, I'm about to say, there. man. Yeah, they, it's yeah. good sort of looking. They got at a lot it, of talent it? out there. Yeah, yeah. Man. a lot of really talent. And I think people. all these people seem to be moving it on, in the right direction. You know, a lot yeah. of it's played live, right. but as again, as we were saying before, just the fact that that the drums just sound heavy. You were saying yeah. that was something that um, you, you got from listening to the roots. Yeah, um, well, listening to the roots. See, I used, I used to sample drums or, or try to tweak my drums how he would play them, how Amir would yeah. play them and tweak them, you know what I'm saying? And that's how I want them to sound. So I, I know it's hard to get. I know, you know, you, it's it's hard to do, man. It's, yeah. it's hard to mix them joints like and try to sound them like, get them, get them to sound like they came out in the 70s or something. You know? But, but you know, now I suppose leading on to the album, I mean, that track's like Think Twice. I mean, what, what, I mean how is that? Is, is that just a band replaying... Um, the sort of Mazel Brothers sound, or is that bits of samples chucked in and just a... Um, surprisingly, um, it's me and uh, one other cat, yeah. Dwelle, all instruments, all live. It, it sounds like a Mazel Brothers, you know, the production. Right, yeah, you know I mean? yeah, like, yeah, right. So, not, yeah, that, that, that's, that's what I wanted to try and uh, kind of recreate that yeah. type of feel, because, like, like I said, listen to uh, Amir from The Roots, he, he got me, um into that you know into trying to recreate going to the studios looking at the credits on the album seeing what studios they recorded at like go to that studio for the drum room and, okay, yeah, so yeah, it's just yeah, that heavy like that. sort of research to get that yeah yeah authentic sort of right sound. And, and it has to be that way well it definitely pays off yeah it definitely pays off i mean the, the other thing which you know on the album you've got and as featured on the uh the spacex remix that you did okay. it two new rappers right frank, frank and, and dank. dank yeah well what's the story with them okay that's that's actually um the first group uh, coming off of this new label, uh, McNasty MCA. Okay, yeah, you've you done know. a deal with MCA. Yeah, right? so that's that's my label. Okay. Everybody. Um, and what was it called? Uh, McNasty. McNasty okay. MCA. Um, and Frank and Dank actually, uh, people, cats I grew up with. Yeah. Detroit. Uh, they were actually around through all of the, all of the experiences. So, and um, is that one of the things you want to do with a label? Bring through like the sort of a, a new school of Detroit, or yeah. is, you know, just whatever just, sounds good. Yeah, and, yeah whatever. Just music. I, I want to do some music. I, I'm looking for a rock group. I'm looking yeah. for yeah, nice okay. um, soul R&B, a singer, a real singer, some, or you know, some real talent. I, I want to do some Barry Gordy type of thing. Wicked. You know. I mean, um, does that that Motown thing? Do you sort of think? Yeah, I mean, would that be a, a thing you'd? I, I suppose it would be quite nice for yeah, you to, to say, be selling as yeah. many records as Motown. I say, I, 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 look, it could be done. It could be done. I, I went to um, Motown Museum, uh, actually, for the first time l last week. Yeah. And, oh, when I went, I, yeah. well, I had to go there. It yeah, was right. And I'm saying it's, it's it? there. It's like people from, from Detroit, you know, being that it's right there, you know, we don't take advantage of it, you know what I'm saying? But actually a friend of mine uh, suggested I, that I go and see it's Barry Gordy building this thing from six hundred dollars, and man, I mean, 
It's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's incredible to, to just walk through that and, and see where all of that magic was done. All in the bottom of people's houses. and Right, you know? Yeah. And, and they had that sound, the Motown sound. And, you know, so that that's that's what I'm trying to do. Well, you definitely, there's definitely a sound that, that you've got that's, that's coming through and it definitely seems to be sort of uh, doing quite nicely, doesn't yeah. it? Really? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Things things are looking good. It takes a little while. I see slow for sure out, but um, I, it's definitely worth it in the end. It's a big place to get to get your your message across in, isn't it? Really, but it seems yeah. to definitely be happening. Right. I mean the Erica thing as well. I mean, how's, how yeah, was that? Yeah. Was that that again through the sort of the mm. the network? Yeah. Um. Actually, yeah, yeah. And um, by working with Amir from the Roots, that's how I really got up with with her. Cause yeah. um, he was actually just working with her at first. Yeah. And he just he kind of brought us in, so. Good looking on him, but good looking on her too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uh, she was nice person to work with. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was a little complicated because I never worked with a yeah, a, a, you know, but artist she got on her own level, sort of take you know? and um, you know, yeah, she had oh, a heavy involvement. The album is that's her album, definitely. Right. Yeah, definitely. I mean, from everything, she had a lot to do with everything. So yeah, definitely. And it was definitely uh. Working with James, like I said, James on a lot of the joints. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. So, I mean, on on the label, have you what stuff have you got? Um, have you got anything else lined up other than Frank and Dank and Frank and Dank? Anyone um, you should be looking out for. Look out for a solo, J Dilla LP. J Dilla is the new name. It's no longer J D. Okay. Due to you know the, you know every time every time you say J D, everybody you know yeah. Dupree. Du pre, uh, no okay. misunderstanding, you know. Okay, just, all right, so you have got that sort of... Yeah, I, you know, and then besides that, I'm trying to do something new, period, so... You got a new a new thing coming through? Yeah, new sound, soul aquariums, watch out, like I said. Um, Any clues as to what it's going to be like? Or should we ooh, just wait and see? Uh, expect the unexpected, I, I say that. I mean, anything you can imagine that I haven't touched, I'm going to try to touch it, so... Wicked. Yeah. Wicked. I mean, you know, li li you know, a lot of other uh, sort of other musics that are around. I mean, new stuff. What, yeah. what are things are you checking? I'm checking Radiohead. I'm checking Stereo Lab. I'm checking Dick. You no know, older artists. You know, like um, Lil Cal Jada. Uh, I like to listen to that while I'm walking around the crib. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yeah, yeah, Of course. Yeah, yeah. You know. Classics. I mean, what, what about any of the? Have you had any of the sort of the, the two step or drum and bassy things coming out? Of drum here? and bass. Mm. I'm, I'm actually gonna do something. I'm gonna do a um, project. I have a, something in mind. I just I need the right tools for it. I get. Um, I wanna do a craft work revisited, like BBE, like the joint on there. Yeah. I wanna I wanna do a whole LP like that. Wicked. Um, yeah. So I'm definitely Detroit definitely coming through. Yeah. I Wicked. definitely wanna do. It that. was funny because I interviewed um I interviewed Slum Village um when they came over to promote their record that was over and. Uh, I would ask them about about the uh, the techno thing, right? And I go, oh, you know, what do you think of it? And they were like, no, it's cool, it's cool. But they went, it's cheap budget music, <laughs> right, 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 right. And it, it really made me think. I was just, I sort of thought, well, what do they mean by that? And but then again, yeah. listen, going back and listening to hip hop records, and you know, again, like we were chatting about earlier, the, the process mm -hmm. of yeah. you know putting it together. What, when you do yours, you're gonna do. Uh, Non cheap budget, oh, yeah, high nah, budget, yeah, right, music. right. Nah, it's, it's, Cause it's that's something I'd love be, to hear. Yeah, man, it's, it's going just by listening to uh, like Radiohead, like I said, Radiohead, Stereo Lab, and uh, you know groups like that, just to name a couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the way the albums were done, the whole album, you know what I mean? So like the, from the spread across the yeah, way, all yeah. then melds into one, and right, you know. right. That, that's that's what I'm interested in. You know, that's what attracts me to the music, to the artist. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, like. Whoa, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know Radiohead had a joint where it's just a drum kick in the roads. It's a, it's a mad album, isn't it? Yeah, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm so, man, I'm a fan, so. Wicked, that's great. Definitely. So look, the, the, the album, um, Welcome to Detroit, well, what, what, what was the sort of, uh, what was the, what's the plot with it? Um, it, it actually started um, as a, uh, I guess you would say, breakbeat album. Okay. Just, you know, it's supposed to be for, in, like, instrumentals. But, um... Because it's part of this BBE Beat Generation series, right, which has also right. got uh, 88 Keys, right. Jazzy Jeff, Pete Rock, right. Marley Mar, King Brit. It's quite right. heavy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, it's do you have much to do with King Brit? Nah, you know what? I haven't got over that. Case. He's got some quite interesting things. You know what? I've heard. Yeah, a couple of people told me. I was like, I never. Uh, 
some nice little, uh, you know, sort of, sort of a lot of it's sort of housey, mm. but on a sort of offbeat. Do you know what I mean? It's got, yeah. it's got the funk. It's got the sort of the syncopation. Mm. Yeah, I think you. Yeah. I don't know. You might might be quite into it. Okay, I've got worth checking out. But look, it, again, it's a pleasure. Oh, Thanks thank for coming you, in. Man. It's wicked. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. No, I no, really you do. know, and the the, the the music is, it's just new, yeah. and it's it's a formula, a format that that I've always loved. And it's great to meet someone who's just completely pushing it forward. Yes. And into yes. a bit of everything and Yeah. Nice one. Thank you. Keep keep it coming. Thank you, man. Oh yes, definitely, definitely. Jay Dilla, thank you. Peace. Great pleasure to welcome.